So you've built up an audience as an influencer and now you're ready to start taking on sponsored projects. But what should your fee be? And should you start working for free? Well, I'm here to help you arrive at that answer. When you Google influencer rates, you'll find wildly inconsistent answers and ways to calculate them. Judging from my own personal experiences, I think these are mostly garbage. And honestly, what these sites are proclaiming as standard are anything but standard. And that's largely because it varies widely between what people are being paid and what they deserve to be paid. If a company looking to hire a creator is steadfast in that dollar amount per thousand followers rule, I'm likely not the right fit for them. And that's because my value and other creators' value, including yours, lies beyond our follower count. This is why it's just not feasible to make a one-size-fits-all calculation. So instead of giving you some bogus rates calculator, here are some things that you should consider when determining your rates. Amount of work, statistics such as follower count and reach, impressions, engagement rate, conversion rate, and then usage, overhead costs, exclusivity, types and amount of posts, your skill set, and of course, the brand's budget. Okay, let's talk about number one on the list, the amount of work. This is the amount of hours you're putting in, what the timeline is, what the turnaround is, and payment depends on a lot of things, but two main ones are the amount of work, which has nothing to do with metrics, and your advertising value, which has everything to do with metrics. But regardless of your advertising value, you should be paid for your time at minimum because you're still putting in the work. And the way you should think about it is like, Imagine a photographer goes to a shoot. They shoot an entire lookbook and at the end, the client says, we're not gonna pay you. You don't have a big social media following. Like, absolutely not, that would not fly. So you shouldn't let it fly either. Maybe you don't have the same advertising value as some of your peers and that should be considered in your payment, but you're still putting in the work. So you do have some value. The brand came to you for a reason. Don't forget that. And now let's turn to statistics. Statistic requests will vary from project to project and client to client, but here are some that you should consider. Follower count, actual reach, and impressions. And the first number that potential partners are going to see is your follower count. While this isn't the only number, it will shape a creator's fee. However, follower count and actual reach or average impressions are very different things and more and more clients are asking for more detailed analytics or putting more emphasis on your engagement, which I will get to in one minute. But how does that translate to your website? Well, it's pretty similar in that they're going to wanna to see your traffic. The main thing that potential partners will ask for are monthly page views and unique users to make sure that you have lots of eyes on your site. Likes, comments, saves, shares, and replies are all examples of how your audience can engage with you depending on the platform. And the more engaged your audience is, the more valuable they tend to be for potential advertisers, because that means that they're paying attention to the products that you use and the products that you advertise. So that's why I tend to emphasize not just focusing solely on growth, but also really building and fostering and connecting with the community that you already have. Conversion rate. If the main focus of a campaign is sales, this is likely the metric that they'll focus on. Does your audience click through and buy product? Start tracking. Affiliate companies such as Reward Style and Shop Style Collective make this very easy to track and make additional revenue. And they have their own campaigns and will take notice if you have a great conversion rate. These affiliate programs can be used on both social media and your website, which is great because you can have an additional independent revenue stream that requires zero negotiations. Not enough people consider this next one, and I think that they should, and that is usage fees. So what are the clients using your photos and videos for? Is it just on your channels? Is it being used on their channels? Is it on their site, their newsletter, in print, for a commercial? This is all going to help determine your fee. I do tend to be a little bit looser if they're just cross-posting as long as they give me credit, because I do appreciate the extra exposure, but, if they're using it for a bigger commercial purpose, that requires an extra fee. If a brand requires exclusivity, for example, if you can't work with a competitor X days before or X days after, that can affect the rate. 
Now, generally, this is more for long-term exclusivity because I do practice this in good faith around the time of the project with direct competitors. A static post in feed, video, reels, IGTV, stories with swipe ups, dedicated blog posts, syndicated to other platforms. These will all have different fees depending on what the ask is. For example, a common ask on Instagram is one static in feed post, two to three story slides and a swipe up, and sometimes a dedicated blog post. But more and more companies are asking for video content, which requires more work and therefore more money. There's going to be a difference between somebody who takes a quick iPhone photo and somebody who does a full production and spends hours and hours perfecting their campaign deliverables. There is value, advertising value in particular, in both of those, and sometimes an iPhone photo performs really well for particular influencers. But again, it's also about the work you put in and your skill set, and if you have a unique point of view that you bring to the table. Here's an example. A brand wants to hire two influencers for the same campaign. And those two influencers have the exact same metrics. But influencer A is known for raw, real, in the moment, quick iPhone photos, and that's where they thrive. Influencer B is known for their high production, stop motion animations that take them hours to produce and not many people can do. That brand wants influencer A to do what they're known for, a quick iPhone shot, and they want influencer B to deliver that high production value stop motion animation. Well, obviously influencer B should get paid more for that because not only are they putting in more work, but they're also bringing their unique expertise to the table. With most creatives, you're not just paying them for their time, you're paying them for their skill set. Okay, this next tip is a little bit boring, Lacey, bear with me, um, but it's the honest truth. You gotta keep the brand's budget in mind to a certain degree. For example, maybe it's a brand that you really, really love, but they just don't have the budget that you want, or you're super excited about the campaign, or maybe it's a small business and they can't afford your fee, but you just wanna help them out, or sometimes it's just like a super slow period and it's a very easy ask. That's okay, it's fine to have a sliding scale. You don't have to have fees set in stone. Just make sure that there's a compromise. There can't be a huge disparagement between what your normal rate is and what the brand is willing to pay. So a good place to start is just ask them what the budget is. And they're normally gonna lowball you a little bit, leave some room for negotiations. So don't be afraid to push back a little bit. And then just ask yourself, does this seem like a fair rate for the amount of work that I'm putting in and go with your gut. Now on to the question that newer influencers ask me probably more than anything. Should I work for free product? <laughs> I am not against working for free product if it's something you're really excited about, you are the one who approached the brand, you're looking to build a relationship or there's no strings attached. Generally, I have a rule of thumb when it comes to accepting free product. If a company wants to send me something and there's no strings attached, and it's something I genuinely love, I'll usually share it organically in stories or something or wear it for a post without a need for compensation. But if there are strings attached, if there are posting requirements, it's time to talk money. Now, like I said, I'm not against working for trade. Most of us have done it, but like a lot of us say, free lipstick does not pay my rent. And at the end of the day, it is a job, so paid jobs will take priority. Also, remember that free product needs to be disclosed as a gift just as you would a sponsored post. If a brand contacts you, remember the ball is in your court. And if you ask for budget and they say exposure, that's a huge red flag. Just like lipstick doesn't pay the bills, exposure doesn't either. Plus, they contacted you, so don't make them feel like they're doing you a favor. This is by no means an official or exhaustive list. This is just from years of personal experience. So if there's anything that you think I've missed, I would love to hear your thoughts. In the end, if you don't have an agency that will help you arrive at rates that are fair for you, it's great to connect with other creators and influencers who will discuss their rates with you and compare. The only way that we're going to arrive at a fair standard rate is by being transparent with one another. In order to get fair pay, we need to make sure that everyone is getting fair pay. Because if one person accepts less than what they're worth, it's going to affect everyone moving forward and what companies are willing to pay. 
Though I wish I could give you that magical calculator to easily determine your rates, I hope this information helped you. So the next time a company asks you for your rates, don't be afraid to ask for what you're worth. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back in future episodes with more tips and tricks, so don't forget to subscribe. Bye.